body, speech, and mind held in perfect oneness. I send my heart along with the sound of the bell. May the hearers awaken from forgetfulness and transcend all anxiety and sorrow. Bye. Good evening, my dear brothers, sisters, and friends. Today is Friday, October 2nd, 2015. We are having our weekly meditation session. How are you today? I'm very happy to, um, to be with the Sangha, with the brothers and the sisters in this evening after a few weeks absent from uh, the temple. According to my um, schedule, uh, I travel quite a lot lately to share uh, practice and also um, retreats in uh, North America. And um, I, uh, I deeply appreciate all the hard work of uh, the young monastics. Especially um, last week, we have a full day in uh, Westlock. How many of you were in Westlock last Saturday? Did you, did you enjoy so far? Mm. Very much. Mm. I think um, <clears throat> even though I'm not home, but I always uh, keep uh, contact to see how everything going. Even Friday night after the session here, you are in Westlock and I contact uh, Peter to see how, how are the brothers and uh, sisters, the Sangha there. And I heard uh, about more than 30 of you attend uh, a full day. I was thinking that if it's possible, we may have another day like that in winter time. So you can enjoy uh, your quiet time in Westlock Meditation Center. And you know that um, one of my wish, my dream, to when I establish the Westlock Center is for the Sangha uh, to have their retreat. So even though you cannot uh, attend three days, four days or more, at least you will try to stay overnight, one night, 
and a full day. So you can um, have more time into your practice. And uh, because uh, when we go to Westlock, and um, everything is away from the noisy, so it's more time for you to relax, and the environment will help us a lot. Of course, when we uh, practice, the mind is the most important. No matter where you live, even in the very this quiet environment, as long as your inside is stable, solid, then you don't have to worry. But in our daily life, we still have too much contact, and very easy to attract us, to distract us from away from our mindfulness. So always remind ourselves, always remind ourselves, mindfulness is our teacher. Mindfulness is the right guidelines. And for those who are very new to the term, mindfulness means be very careful, be very aware of the situation, of the environment, of every single thought that arises in our mind. Because if we follow the negative thinking, the negative thoughts regularly, we become the negative habit of thinking. And then from the thoughts, it will guide us to the action. It will guide us to the speech. And with our mindfulness, we just follow all the negative actions, negative speech, and we become a negative person. And we, don't, we do not like to contact or socialize with a negative person. That means every single time when we speak, we have no peace, no joy. Every time we react, and our react always hurt the others. So therefore, we come to the, the practice in order to transform the negative habits that we now become a real habit in ourselves, in us. Let's say we are now 40 years old, and in the past 40 years, we haven't had any chance to reflect back how we lived, how we act, how we talk. And when we realize we hurt, we damage a lot of communication, we damage a lot of beauty things in ourselves. So coming to the practice is not something, not, not anything new, but more chance, more time for us to come back to see, to reflect ourselves. Mindfulness is like a beautiful mirror, a bright mirror, to help us to reflect, to shine very clearly on our daily routine. If we are not mindful enough, we may waste our day. Every time when I'm away from the temple, I'm not uh, with my young monks. I miss them. I miss them a lot. And silently, I, 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 talk, I, like, I, it's like I talk to them. I say, my, my dear students, you know that Thai is away from home, but I'm working. I'm working for the sake of others. And I hope that you understand and try your best to practice at home. Every time when I'm thinking of them, and that is something I silently pretend that I'm talking directly to them. And I think, um, you know, mind contact, instead of speak up, into words. I have that kind of thought in my mind, and I hope that they do receive my mind message, my silent message. Are you? And I think, I think because of that, and they have done a good job, they put their effort into taking care of the Sangha. 
And I think it is also a good chance for them to grow up in this, uh, in this environment. Because I was, I was grew up in this same environment. They are more lucky than me because when they ordain as a young monastic like this, they have friends, they have brothers, like seven, eight of them together. When I was a young novice, nobody with me. I'm alone. I'm alone. But one thing that I'm not lonely. We have to be, be sure we are alone. But we are not lonely. Lonely is the feeling. Lonely is the feeling. Alone is something you have to be alone. Sometimes we say, leave me alone. Why? Because I'm too tired. I need somebody to leave me alone. So that means alone is something very real, very true, and very needed. But make sure we don't have the feeling of lonely. You know, I always uh, have a very bad karma about uh, my flight uh, status. I was, the, I was uh, uh, stay overnight in the Chicago airport last Friday. I stayed overnight there because uh, in Chicago there was a storm, big rain. So my flight from Philadelphia to Chicago was delayed for six hours. So when I arrived in Chicago, it's already midnight. And they told me that there is no more flight back to Edmonton, so you have to stay here overnight. And they cannot afford for a hotel because this is weather, not their fault. <laughs> not the, not the, 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 not the air, um, not the, um, Airline uh, falls. That's, that's why they cannot afford for, for um, a hotel. So we have to stay overnight in the, in, the, in the airport. And what do I do during the time when I was uh, alone like that? Rest. Rest. <laughs> Meditation. So therefore, we keep in mind, sometime after a busy day, a tired day, a stressful day, we want some time to be quiet. We want some time to rest. And how do we rest? We close our eyes, we close our ears, nothing else. No music, no talking. Nothing that we can use, the eyes, the ears, our speech, just totally rest. Rest like a pebble. Do you remember sometime, I gave you an example about resting like a pebble. When you throw a pebble into the pond, and slowly the pebble was sunk down and touched the very bottom of the lake and stay there. And sometimes we need to let our body rest and down like a, a pebble, down in, deep in the water and, and stay at the base of the lake. And if we're able to do that, we don't need a lot of hours to sleep. Sometimes four, five hours, but you sleep deep. It's better than you sleep hours, like 12 hours, 10 hours. But after you wake up, you feel tired. And do you realize that sometimes when the body, the physical body is too tired, our sleep difference than when it's a regular day we sleep. How can, be, how can we tell? We cannot tell, but people who are still awake, they look at us the way we sleep, the way we breathe. They can tell we have a very tired day, and our sleep is very tired, right? So if a day, just a regular routine, 
we go to bed on time, we sleep on time, and no worries, no fear, nothing heavy that carry in our mind. Our sleep easier, faster, and very well. Sleep tight, sleep well. So that's why before we go to bed, we say good night, sleep tight, sleep well. That is the wish. So every, you see that in our daily life, every day when we wake up, we say good morning. Make sure you have a good morning. Do not turn your morning upside down. And, be, and then when we go to bed, we say good night. Make your night possible. Make your night positive. There are tons of things for you to worry during the day. There is no worth for you to continue to worry when you call resting. You call the night we sleep is the resting hour. Then make sure we rest. It's like a vehicle. It's like a car. We drive all day, we need to turn the, the motor, the engine off to let it cool, otherwise it's burnt. The physical body is the same. So the Buddha advised us. Mindfulness means we know how to take good care for the body and the mind. And what is our daily practice here? What is the mindfulness for? in order to learn the art of take, taking care for the body and the mind. Once we know how to take care for our own body, our own mind, then we have, we have enough qualified to take good care for the others, especially our loved one. When we sleep with someone, like our husband, our wife, that means the one who sleeps very near to us, they also need a good sleep too. If we are unable to sleep, what happened to the other one? They also cannot sleep because we turn around, we turn around, and we make even somebody sleep next to us, like another bed, but they still cannot sleep because they can hear our turning. And usually when we are unable to sleep, we feel the night is so long. Have you ever experienced like that? When we're able to sleep, we wake up and say, wow, time so fast, I don't have enough sleep. But any night we cannot sleep, we feel the night is so long. We look at the clock and we are waiting for the morning. And the Buddha said, a very long night for the one who cannot sleep. The, the, the recognition is very hard and suffering for the one who is still in the rhyme of death and birth, of birth and death. We are in the cycle of birth and death, and this cycle is too long. For all of us, the same as the night is too long for the one who is unable to sleep. So what does sleeping mean? Sleeping means when we are able to absence our five senses. Eyes no more contact. Ears no more contact. Tongues no more contact. Body, no more contact. We don't smell anything, just breathe. At the time we sleep, we only follow our breath. Nothing else to, for us to smell. Nothing else for us to taste. Nothing else for us to touch. Nothing else for us to see. Nothing else for us to, to hear. So we, do, we 
close all of that to let the five senses rest. And if we're able to, let's say if you're your mind, if your mind still thinking, then the all, all the five senses open. Right? When the mind thinking worry too much, we cannot sleep. And when we cannot sleep, our eyes still open. We can hear a lot of things around. We can smell something. And what happens? Sometimes we're hungry. If we cannot sleep, we feel hungry. Then we have to wake up and eat. And when you eat too full, you also cannot sleep. When you're too hungry, you still cannot sleep. But what is one of the ways to help us sleep well? Drink warm water at night before you go to bed. That's one of the techniques. Naturally, you don't need to take sleep aid or sleeping pill. Drink warm water because the warm water will help you to circulate, to help the blood circulate and help our digestion good so we can sleep well. So for those, or you can drink a warm glass of milk. When you can drink a warm, a warm glass of milk, it also helps you to sleep well. So the mindfulness helps us. When you come to the practice like this, do not think that you are come to a religion, a faith, a belief. But you are coming to the practice. You are coming for the technique, the art of living. How to make our day more beautiful. How to make our day more meaningful. And once your day is beautiful, you offer that beautiful to many others. If we have a plan, let's say an orchid, every time when we bought a new, a new orchid, the flower is so beautiful, and we leave it at home, and usually it can last for six months. But because we don't know how to take good care for the orchid, the orchid dies in two weeks. Then now we need to search. We need to find how to take good care for the orchid. Any plant, they have the way, the instruction, how to keep this plant last long and give us more flowers. Some plants need a lot of sun. Some plants cannot have a lot of sun. Some plants need just a little water. Some plants need a lot of water. And every plant, they have their own instruction how to take care of the plant. Each of us is like a plant. And we need to pay attention to each other, how to take good care for this plan. And this plan will say how to take good care for this plan. This is the interbeing. This is because that is. That is because this is. I am able to travel around to share with all the friends, with all the Sangha around the world because I have my Sangha here to help me to run the activities here. So, I have them, that's why I'm able to travel. The more I travel, the more I experience, I come back and I share with this Sangha. We cannot depart from, we cannot detach ourselves from anything, anyone. And because we are together, that's why we need to learn how to make this together last long and healthy. Last long is one point, but how is, 
powers last, is very weak or strong and happy. We all need a last. We all, we all need the long love, the long communication, the long united. But make sure it's a healthy united. It's like a physical body. We live long but healthy. Not live long but lot of sickness. Very weak. This afternoon there was a monk from Vietnam. He came from Vietnam. He visited and he only spent about five days here. Not even a week yet. But he realized that I work a lot. And I, don't, I have lack of sleep. And he interviewed me. He said, now I would like to ask you a question. What is the technique? What is the secret? I can see that you work a lot. You don't sleep much. But how come you still have a lot of energy? From morning to night. He interviewed, he asked, but we all know the question. We all know the answer. And the answer is the energy of the mind. The mind is very important. Because once the mind is happy, and you feel happy to do all the things for others, that's become the food to nourish us. This is the fruit of wishes, the fruit of invisible. We cannot eat, we cannot swallow, but this food is very creative. The more you use it, the more you have it. It's not like the edible food. You need to put in the mouth and you, you bite into pieces and then you swallow. This food is invisible. But what can make this food available? Mindfulness. You come here regularly and you will hear me introduce you this word. But every time I introduce you, I have a new defined, a new definition for the word mindfulness. Because mindfulness is the art of living. The more you art, the more you create. The more you learn something new from there. The Buddha gave us a lot of ways to help us maintain mindfulness. One day, there was a, a prince who passed by the Buddha. And he sat beside the Buddha and he asked the Buddha a question. Dear Lord Buddha, do you sleep well? Do you always have good sleep? And the Buddha said, of course, I always have good sleep. And I can tell you, I am the most, the most person who sleeps very well. He asked, why? And the Buddha gave an example. Let me ask you a question. Let's say if a very rich man who can sleep in a very luxury house, good bed, good blanket, good pillow, everything is so good. Do you think he sleep well? And the prince said, yes, he sleep very well. The Buddha said, let's suppose if one day he still sleep exactly the same, he still have everything the same, but in his mind, lot of worries, lot of hate, lot of greed, lot of ignorance, a lot of things for him to worry. His family is always fighting. Do you think he sleep well? And the prince said, of course not. 
And the Buddha said, same thing. I am the one who have no worries. That's why I always live well. So what is the art to help us live well? Less worry. Doesn't mean we, have, we don't worry, we do worry. But we have to learn the art when and how. If we have no worry, life is not possible. Let's say, I worry that um, we don't have enough uh, heat for the building. That's why I will call the company to come here to inspect before we have winter. That is a kind of worry. But I should know that when and how. If I worry for the furnace in the winter time, then I should contact any company that able to work on the furnace. And that will be done in the daytime. Let's say if I have that kind of worry raised up during my sleep, sleeping time, then I will say, oh, okay, tomorrow I will contact the company. Then I have the answer. I know when and how. Then I have settled that worry down. But sometimes we have the habit, we worry. But every single thing we worry, but we don't know why. And it's not necessary for us to be worried at this time, but we still worry. So that's why it's a fact. So as a human, we cannot have no worry. We still have worry. But the practice here, when and how. Sometimes we mix up the things we should do at, during the daytime than we do at nighttime. Things supposed to be, you know, leave it away, and then we bring it up to the daytime. The same as when we, when we eat, just put away the newspaper, turn off the TV, just enjoy the meal. We don't do that. We turn on television. We put the newspaper beside. We still we turn on the radio. We keep talking. And when we ask, what are you doing? I am eating. <laughs> we answer this way, but we do the other way. We say, I am eating. But during the eating, we watch TV. And we define, hey, that man is like this, this lady is like that. Do you know anything news about this guy? We talk and lot of things, nothing related to the meal. And this is how we are. It's nothing wrong. It's not a sin, it's not a sin. But we don't know how to live clearly with what are we doing in the present moment. And that's why we cannot settle everything because everything mixed up from small to small. And later on, it's become a big, major mess. I can give you an example. Let's say if you finish your dish, just one dish, rinse it, put on, never have a full sink of dirty dishes. When we have a full sink of dirty dishes, we're lazy to wash. When you go back home, you hang up your jacket, your coat, then you don't see the mess. But you, but you say, oh, just one coat is okay, there. One pair of shoes is okay, there. And then later on, we have the whole house, every single thing become a big mess. This is the practice. If we try to put everything back to where it's supposed to be, every single thing, then nothing to be worried, nothing to be upset. Once you see a full house of mess, what do you feel? Upset. You feel very stressful. You feel no space. 
And once you feel no space, you get angry easily. And then you yell at someone, why don't you turn, put this on? Why don't you do this on? And that person will yell back, then why don't you do it? <laughs> so, what is blessed here? You know, I always remind, sometimes I am rushed, yeah, I'm in a rush. I throw my shoes, I walk a few steps, I say, no, no, this is what I'm sharing, this is what I thought, I should not do this, I will come back and fix my shoe. If you say, what are, what are you doing, why you come to Friday classes, mindfulness, and every time when we blaming, this is how you practice mindfulness? <laughs> That's why the Buddha said, even the very small mistake, but you still don't care about it, you just keep doing it regularly, it's become a major evil. First, only a mistake, but regularly it's become evil. If a single, a tiny goodness, we still don't care and we don't do it, then nothing can be possible. If it's even small, but we do it regularly, it's become a major, an, a big merit. I used to give an example. Imagine the mailman. Just one very tiny, thin mail, but thousands of mails is heavy. Now, he carried that heavy bag. He walked by every single house, he dropped one down. Just one single mail, one single letter. Later on, he will empty his bag. So sometimes we say, oh, just one pair of shoes is not a problem. One jacket is not a problem. One dish is not a problem. But let's imagine every thing, single thing is not a problem. Then when you look outside, you see the whole thing is a problem. <laughs> when you look at one thing, you don't see any problem. But when you stand in the center, you see the whole, it will be a problem. That's why we need meditation. So what do we do if we already have a big mess? Sometimes you feel, oh, I don't know how to start to clean up this room. <laughs> have you ever feel that way sometimes? Sometimes it's the whole mess and you don't know how to start. If you don't start at one corner or one piece, then nothing will be put up. Nothing will be clean. So, don't worry this side. Now we need to focus to this corner. Focus to that corner. And then you clean this corner. And after this corner, it gives you more energy because this part is clean. Make you feel fresh. You can move on to another part. This is my experience. You know, sometimes um, on a big celebration and a big event, a lot of things come to me at once. So when I come to my room, I put everything, you know, around my room because I have no time to put everything back. So after everything done, I will close my door. I just focus to one side first. I put everything back nice and neat. And then slowly I turn around. Because the feeling of freshness is very important. So that you don't wait, please do not wait to someone to say good morning to you. Every morning when you wake up, you have to say good morning. Remind us, I must have a good morning. Good morning is not a greeting. You wait for someone to greeting us. But good morning is a mantra. Do you know a mantra in Buddhism? Mantra means a magic word. You don't have to say, Om Mani Padme Hum, in order to call, it's a mantra. 
Mantra can be anything that helps you to stand up, help you to be strong, to be energy. Let's say, I have my own mantra, don't be lazy. Every time you're lazy to do something, you have a mantra to recite many times, don't be lazy. We have a lot of mantra. If you have a, a mindful practice, you can create your own mantra. In French, they call chocolate chocolat, right? That's how French pronounce chocolat. And chocolat in Buddhism means a nun. Chocolat, lamb and yelling. Chocolat means the nun will yell at you. <laughs> so that is our mantra every day for our jokes. Hey, if you don't do that, she will offer you a, a piece of chocolate. <laughs> if you don't do it, chocolate. <laughs> so, my friends help you to create something fun to help you to move up in your practice. Since I'm young, I always create that in my mind. If I want to memorize a long, a long prayer, I look through them, that and I will find, you know, something fun from that part to help me to memorize easier. And this, I apply this way into my life too. Even sometimes things are very hard to do. But I focus to a positive thing to make me fresh and willing to deal with this you know, negative situation. It helped me a lot to go through many difficult times. So the reason I share, because I want to inform with you, mindfulness helps you a lot in the practice. Not, don't think only in the temple. But without the temple, you don't know where to find mindfulness, to learn the basic of mindfulness that you can create. One day there was a uh, you know, lot of problems, a lot of things to, to do. Uh, one man gave me a ride to the airport, and during the way to the airport, I'm singing. He turned around and said, Thai, how can you still can sing? I said, what do you want me to do? <laughs> you know, sometimes the freshness. Even in a very difficult person, a very hard person for you to deal, do not focus to the negative of that person much. Think about the positive, the goodness of that person, just a few points, even still help you to overcome and you help you to accept that person. Last week, I uh, was in the state and I have helped a family who have a very hard situation. And um, during our conversation, and I told them, if you uh, calm yourself down and you will find some good points from that person in order for you to smile at that person, accept that person, and let go and forgive. It's a very simple sharing, but that click right and after, before before we leave, he leave and he said i enjoy our conversation and one point you wake me up and that is 
you know, reflecting on the good points of that person. In many days ago, I just, you know, focused on the negative of that person and I forgot about the goodness of that person. Sometimes you, you, um, you look at the full sink of dirty dishes and this is will help you to wash the dishes with your happiness. Wow, I have a lot of Buddhas for me to bathe. Every single dish is a, a Buddha for me to bathe. And I know after I clean this sink, everything will be nice and neat. Everything will be clean. I always, you know, have create something positive when I'm doing things in order to keep me in a good mood, in a happy way to do it. Sometimes I'm tired, physically. Let's say people call me around 3 in the morning. They say, Thay, we need you in the hospital because my mom passed away. We have the right to say, I'm sorry, I'm tired, I cannot go, I'm sick, whatever reason. But I won't say no. I will ask them the address and I'm willing to go. You know, especially in the cold winter day. And why I'm driving? Very quiet. And if someone who a little bit scared, they will scare the hospital. Three in the morning, no one. You know, with a big empty space. But I know I sacrificed about one, two, three hours. But I will make a lot of people in this family warm because of their loss. Thinking about the positive, it keeps you good energy. So the Buddha answered to the prince, I am the one who detached from desires, from hate, from ignorance. That's why I can sleep well. So when the Buddha said that he sleep well, sleep tight, we think there is some secret. But the secret here is learn how to put things away when we rest. That's all. It's like um, when we have a problem with our loved one. Okay? Never bring all the old things from many days ago back and that will ruin the relationship. This is one of the art. Why are you angry? Because he did that to me. It's happened now recently, then solve the problem that. Uh, you know, last month he did this, last year he did that. And you bring like 10 years ago to come back, you combine at one, it has become a measure. And this happened many relationships. Mindfulness will help us to see what is right in front of us to solve. Things already passed, let it pass. Things not yet come, don't worry. The point is, what are we doing in the present moment? How is our relationship? Somebody will worry, I am afraid our relationship cannot last long. This is what you're afraid. Then look back, how are you working right in the present moment? Worrying for the future is all right, but need to come back to the present moment. How are you working? How are you dealing? How are you treating each other right in the present moment? In order to keep your relationship last long. I have a young couple. Within these three days, they have a big fight. And last night I talked to this young man and he told me he cannot stand his girlfriend anymore because she always brings back many problems from the past. They know each other for seven years. And you know, within seven years, lots of problems. But every single time 
one thing happened seven years, the past seven years come back, become a major. And he told me, I cannot stand any more Thai. I need your help. And every time like that, and they promise, I promise I won't, I won't talk about the old story again. But again, it's come back. Again, it's come back. That's why during the day, we don't know how to make the day good, then how can we make the night good? If we have a good day, of course we have a good night. This is the law. Because the, the plan is already that, then the result will be that. There is no way that we plant an orange and we have a pepper as a result. We plant pepper, we have pepper. We, have all, we plant orange seed, we have orange as a fruit. This is what we call the law of cause and effect. Today I would like to offer you a very short discourse from the Buddha. How the art to help you to have a good sleep. And the Buddha's art is very simple. If we know how to put aside everything not necessary for the night, then we will have a good night. And remember, things already passed, let it done. Things not yet come, don't worry too much. Focused to the present moment. How is your relationship? How is your communication? How is the way you treat each other? And remember, when you are unable to be happy, the person next to you is also not happy. When I go to the hospital to visit a patient that I know, and when I join my palm and I make my, my, my short prayer to that patient that I know, but my energy is also embraced the next patient. Last week, I was in Montreal and I went to the hospital to visit a few patients. And there was a patient who sleep next to one of the patients I know. When I come there and I make a prayer, a short prayer for the, the, the patient that I know, after I walk out, he speaks French to someone there. The next day he said, I don't know what, what did that monk, when that monk came, I don't know what he did. But the night, last night, I slept well. I feel very light. I feel relaxed. I don't mean to, to show off with you about my, my, my power or anything, but I want to share with you about if you have a positive mind in you for someone, then not only one person can benefit, but few people around you at least will benefit. In our tradition, we used to say, if one person doing something good, the whole community will benefit. It's like a flower bloom. Many people can enjoy the fragrance of the flower. Only one flower bloom. It's like if I light up an incense in this room, not only me to enjoy the fragrance of the incense, but all of us, when we step into this hall, we all can enjoy the fragrance of it. So that's why when I teach my young monks, if one young monk done something wrong, the whole brothers accept 
your problem. I share with them. After that, I talk to them. I say, I know you did not do anything wrong. But I want to teach you the lesson of community. If one of your brother does something wrong, all the brothers affect. This is the energy of the, com of the community. We do good, many people benefit. If we do something bad, also many people benefit from that, that negative. So the mother, the father, very important to the children because they are the main creators for the environment of the family. No matter how you disagree with each other, you need to find a spot to talk, but never argue, never yelling in front of your children, because that means yelling, that means screaming, become very negative for the children. It affects the children a lot. So mindfulness will become the light to shine very near, near and far, very clearly for all of us. I would like to offer you this small booklet. This is what we call the verses of mindful practices. This booklet contains almost 60 verses for your daily practice in both Vietnamese and English. This was done by I collect all the verses for both uh, languages and one, uh, some of the Vietnamese uh, Buddhist member in the United States, they help us to make this book become a handbook like this. So I would like to offer each of the family, if you wish, you can have one book like this. You can take one for your friend if you think that person may need this book. Try to select some of the verses that you like and memorize it. Or you can rewrite or retype in a beautiful card and you take around your home, like in front of the mirror, at the handle of your door. When you open the door, there is a, a verse to open the door. There is a verse to open the window. There is a verse for you to reflect on the mirror. There's a verse for you to brush your teeth, to wash your face. So find something you like. You can make it and, 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 and take it around your home. So every time when you come to that point to do something, you read it day by day. You memorize it. This is the way to cleanse your mind, to help your mind to maintain mindfulness day full. In the future, if we have time, I will slowly go over with the Sangha, each of the Gatha, and explain the meaning of it. So we can, we can uh, this is the, a book like your friend. Maybe after you memorize many of these verses, you become a poet. Because they are in the form of a poem. So I would like to offer you this booklet as a, a gift, early gift, early Christmas gift. You can take one or two for your friend, for your family members, whoever you wish that you, you think you would like to offer them a book like this. Thank you for your listening, thank you for your attending, and as always, your presence uh, nourish our practice a lot. Please enjoy the three sounds of the bell along with your breath.
please relax your legs. If you still have time, um, we would like to invite you to go downstairs for informal gathering so we can have tea together with some mooncake. If you haven't had a chance to enjoy the mooncake, tea with Thai, please come downstairs so we can have a, a short break uh, together downstairs.